Hello and welcome everyone. So in this video we're going to look at the one wire temperature sensor. I'm not sure if there are other types of sensors that use the one wire interface um, because at the moment the ones I've seen all seem to be temperature sensors. However this particular temperature sensor seems quite useful because it's relatively cheap to start with at £3.60 and the end of it is um, stainless steel. It's waterproof, moisture proof and rust proof so there's a number of applications that I could potentially see this being used for, for measuring liquid temperatures to be put into a fridge or to be used outside. They seem to come with a, a roughly a metre of wire on them and they just require power, so positive and negative and then a data pin. The beauty of the one wire interface is that you can stack multiple of these sensors on the same pin. So I'll show you what I've done with this and how to get started we need to connect the red wire to pin 5 um, so we've got 5 volt power we need to connect the black pin to ground and we need to connect the data to pin 7 you also need to add a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor between the positive cable and the data cable so you can either do that if you use one sensor you could just do that on that one particular sensor or if you're using multiple sensors you just still need the one resistor we've made a small breakout board where we've still connected to the same pins but we've got a number of other connections where we can attach the sensors to this small breakout board. It works exactly the same, you just keep connecting the sensors onto the breakout board and then in the software you can then see the different temperature sensors being detected and you can configure a path against each sensor and you can also name it as well. To the Raspberry Pi, so there's a couple of things here that we need to enable to get this up and running. So the first thing to do is to go to Preferences and your Raspberry Pi configuration. When that pops up you need to go to Interfaces and you need to enable the one wire. This will probably be disabled by default. Click Enable, click OK and you may need to restart. Once that's done you need to go and load the GPIO settings. So that's under Open Plotter and GPIO. When that loads um, and you've enabled the interface, you should then see some sensors detected in the 1W, one wire section. Here, this is where we actually set that pin, so you can change it, but the default is um, GPIO 4, which is pin 7 on the Raspberry Pi, which is here. So that is the default, but you can move that around if you want to. If everything's plugged in, you should see your two sensors detected with some IDs and the type of sensor displayed here on the left. Now what you need to do now is you need to map that to a signal K key. So for myself um, I've gone for environment outside temperature so that's going to be one of my sensors and that's going to be at the back of the boat where there's a small vent. I'm going to put the sensor through there. And the other one I'm wondering about um, exhaust temperature and I'm wondering whether I can potentially measure that with one of the sensors not sure yet but it's worth a try so I've mapped those two here and if you've got an earlier version of Signal K there was actually a plugin that did this which you may already have installed if not and you're updated onto the latest version that's the route through but there was another option and that was under plugins so if you have a look in the App Store um, there is a one wire plugin but I think in later releases they've actually moved it into the GPIO pin section now so you don't need to follow that bit Hopefully at this point now, um, if you go to Data Browser, here's one of mine here, outside temperature uh, on the GPIO 1W, and here's the other one, exhaust temperature. So now we're starting to get data recorded into Signal K from those sensors. The thing to point out here is that these are 30 second intervals. So if we go back to GPIO, so back in here, you can see the rate, so that's the refresh rate of the sensors, is 30 seconds. So you're going to get data from these every 30 seconds. Where with the BME sensor, it's pretty much instant. Um, so that's on a slightly different interface. But again, depending on the application, 30 seconds is probably enough. 